Hi. Now, in previous tutorials, I had shown you how to draw probability tree diagrams, put the probabilities on, and combine them to work out the probabilities of various events. And so what I've got here is just another example that you might like to try on your own. So just pause the video and I'll run through this. And also, after this question, I've got a much harder question that you might like to try as well. OK, well, let's see how you got on. Well, we've got our two machines here, A and B, that produce the electronic components. And each machine can either produce defective components or not. So your tree diagram should look something like this, with two trials. First trial is all about the machine, the type of machine, and it could be a or B with a probability of 40% or 0.4 going on A and 0.6 on B. Notice that these should add up to 1. And then depending on the machine that you had, we either produced defective items or not. So first of all, when we write in here the probability of D, D for defective, try not to just write PD being the probability it's dependent on what machine it came from. So it's the probability of being defective given that it came from machine A. And that probability is 4% or 0.04. Similarly, we must have the probability that it's not defective. So I'm going to write a little dash there. You could write a little bar over the top if you like, which is saying not defective and it's given that it came from machine A. Well, we know that these should total 1, so that leaves us with 0.96. And similarly, you could do much the same for B, the probability of being defective, given that it came from B. And if you filled those in, that's what you're going to get. 3% are defective, coming from B, and that leaves you with 97% or 0.97, not defective, coming from B. OK, so hopefully you've got a tree diagram looking something like that. Now to answer part A, we've got the probability that the component is produced by machine B and is defective. And I'd write an intro for that, and you could write it symbolically as coming from B and being defective. You could write a comma if you like, and being defective, or you could insert the word and, or what I like to do in cases like this is to write this notation, B, and it's an N shape with D. If you're familiar with set theory, we use this symbol as an AND situation. Technically, it's called intersection, but I'm going to use it for AND here. And the probability of the component coming from machine B and being defective will be to multiply these probabilities together. Remember, as you go along the branches, you multiply probabilities together. I'm just going to insert, though, that this is probability B times the probability not just of D. It's important to realize it's not probability of being defective. It's the probability of being defective given that it came from B. All right? So, in other words, if you work that out, you've got 0.6 being multiplied by 0.03. And that's going to give you 0.018. Alright? Now, in part B, probability of our component being defective. Now, that's going to be PD. Alright? And so that's why it's important that you just don't write PD here and PD here, because you'll contradict what you're saying down here. PD, the, an item being defective, could come from it being produced by machine A and being defective, or it could have been produced by B and was defective. Now, with this OR situation, we've got what we call mutually exclusive events. They can't happen at the same time. 
So with the OR situation, this becomes a plus. So, probability of A and D, well that's the probability of A times the probability that it's defective given that it came from machine A. We've already seen that for this one, it's the probability of coming from B times the probability that it's defective given that it came from B. And so all we need to do is just insert these values. So A and then defective would be 0.4 times 0.04, 0.4 times 0.04, plus our last answer. I'm just going to write though 0.6 times 0.03 in. But if you work that out, you'll end up with 0.016 plus the 0.018, which comes to 0.034. All right. Now the next question I've got, as I say, is a lot harder. Okay, uh, I'd strongly encourage you to have a go at this. So here's the problem. What we've got in a recent survey, it was found that in a group of 60 girls, 40 boys, the probability of a person being left-handed was 0.18. The probability of a girl being left-handed is 0.1. What is the probability of a boy being right-handed? So pause the video, have a go at this one. Okay, let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, you should have started to have a tree diagram looking something like this. I've got the gender and I've labelled it dexterity for this trial here, whether they're left-handed or not. Okay, so for this first set here, we can either have a girl, so we'll have PG, probability of a girl. We're told that there are 60 girls, 40 boys, so 60 out of 100 or 0 0.6 is our chance of having a girl there. That means the probability of a boy must be 0.4. Okay, 40 out of 100 here adds up to 1. Now, when it comes to these branches, being left-handed depends on your gender. So in other words, we shouldn't really just write PL, otherwise we'll contradict ourselves. It's probability being left-handed given that you're a girl. Okay? Do we know that probability? We don't, do we? Okay, so I've got to leave that blank. This one would be the probability of not being left-handed given that you're a girl. Once I know one of these, I'll know the other because they've got to add up to one. Down here, we've got the probability of being left-handed given that you're a boy, which we don't know either. And this will be the probability of not being left-handed given that you're a boy. So we're not going very far with this. So therefore, we need to look at some of these other statements. Now they tell us here the probability of a girl being left-handed is 0.1. So that means that if you were to multiply this branch and this branch together, this would represent the probability of a girl being left-handed. And we know that it must come to 0.1. So what we're saying here is that the probability of a girl and being left-handed, we know is the probability of a girl, G, times the probability of being left-handed given that you are a girl. This route through here. So this is 0 0.1. So we therefore have 0 0.1 equals probability of a girl, we know is 0 0.6, times the probability of what we're trying to find now, left-handed given that you're a girl. And so Obviously, we just need to divide both sides by 0.6. So we've got 0.1 divided by 0.6 gives us the probability of being left-handed and a girl. So if we do that, therefore, the probability of being left-handed, given that you're a girl, is going to be 0.1 over 0.6. And that is the same as 1 sixth. I won't write it as a decimal because it doesn't give us a nice clean decimal. So I'll leave it as a fraction, 1 sixth. We can fill that in now. And that means that clearly this has got to be 
five sixths because this must total one. Now we want to find out what's the probability of boy being right handed. So right handed is going to mean that they're not left handed. We want to do 0.4 times this probability to answer this question but we're still stuck because we don't know this probability. What else do we know though? Well we know that the probability of being left-handed of a person being left-handed is 0.18. So let's turn our attention to that fact. So we'll just say the probability of being left-handed, that's just L, is going to be achieved if you took a girl and she was left-handed, so it could be a girl and being left-handed, or you could have a boy and that boy was left-handed. Now we have mutually exclusive events here, can't happen at the same time, so this becomes a plus. And we know what some of these values are. We know what the probability of being left-handed is. We're told it's 0.18, so we can say that therefore 0.18 equals the probability of a girl and being left-handed. Well, this was this result up here, which was 0.1. So we've got 0.1 for that one. Now here we've got the probability of boy being left-handed. So we're going to have to do down here, probability of a boy times the probability of being left-handed given that it's a boy. So it's going to be 0.4 times the probability of being left-handed given that you're a boy. So if I take 0.1 from both sides and divide by 0 0.4, I'll get this probability here. So if I do that, leave it up to you to check, we end up with, well, if we take 0.1 anyway away from that, we're going to get 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.4, you end up with 1 fifth. Okay? So I can put that value in there we got one-fifth. That means that this now must be four-fifths. Those two must add up to one. So we're now in a good position to answer this question up here. What's the probability of boy being right-handed? So therefore the probability of having a boy and that boy being right-handed. In other words, not left-handed. That's going to be 0.4 for being a boy times the probability of not being left-handed given that you're a boy. So that's going to be four-fifths. And if you work that out, 0.4 times four-fifths gives you eight twenty-fifths. So I hope you're able to get that one. That's a good question, I think, to be able to do. Okay, well, that brings us now to the end of these examples, and I hope that's given you some idea of what's going on.